first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises belongs to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahabashai, Bahasham, Wahaivakar Kwadash, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahabashai, and who we reverence and honours to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that taught me this truth, and to the hopeful elect across the globe. Okay? And a few, the very few, brothers and sisters listening and learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days. And I want to say to Wadi Yahawa, to Wadi Yahawa Bai Shum, Yahaba Shai, to Wadi Yahawa, to Wadi Yahawa Bai Shum, Yahaba Shai for giving me another day to get out here and to minister. Right? So without further ado, we're going to start on Matthews 20. And we're going to go straight to 27. When answered Peter and said unto him, and this was Yahabashai, who people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Behold, we have forsaken all. In other words, he left all. Everything he had in past time. The life he had in past time. And follow thee. What shall we have there for? So it's the same question with us. We've forsaken all. And to forsake means what? Forget. Put off the life we had in the world. What shall we have there for? So Peter was asking Yahweh, what are we going to have in return? For forsaking everything. And Yahweh shall say unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when a son of man shall sit on the throne of his glory, right, which is Yahweh, you shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So that would that's what that was the word's gonna be. Okay, you'd be sitting upon thrones with Yahweh judging, right? Judging the nations. And everyone that are forsaken, houses or brethren. So brothers that are forsaken houses, brethren, people you knew in the world, right? Or sisters, even sisters, and that doesn't mean you don't speak. That doesn't mean you don't speak to them anymore. It's just that your relationship ain't quite the same, right? Or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold. So if you if you forsake these things, you're going to receive. A double everything you for six forsaken in this world you're gonna receive double so don't think you're losing anything and to lose you have to gain to gain you have to lose right Yahabashai requires a sacrifice just like the demons in the world they require a sacrifice on the left hand side our sacrifice is on the right hand side to Yahabashai and you will get that reward in due time. Shall inherit everlasting life. So the elect, they already have that promise to them. Everlasting life. But many that shall be first shall be last. So those that are first in this kingdom, they're going to be last in the other kingdom. Right? That's why we don't we don't want it now, we don't want our consolation here. Is there a particular amount of fame you're gonna have? Yes, because obviously you're teaching, people are gonna see you. There's a particular amount of fame you're gonna receive, but we're not seeking a world here. We're seeking for the world to come with Yahweh Shai. 
and the last shall be first. And that was those that were humble, that were those that were taken else in this society, in this kingdom. Right? So now let's go to Luke 14 and 16. It's all about them sacrifices. 14 and 16. straight to verse 17 it's like a 16 then said he unto him a certain man made a supper and it was a great supper right and bade many so he invited many guests so in this truth you're gonna have many guests right and sent his servant at supper time and to say to them that were bidden Come for all things were now ready, made ready. So what? The dinner was made ready, it was prepared. Right? And they all with one consent began to make excuse. So they're making excuses. This is individuals that come into the truth and they make excuses. Right? The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, which would be considered what land? Right? and I must needs go and see it. So this individual needs to go and what? See that land, tend to it. And I pray that you have me excused, right? From what? From what? The dining, from the invitation. Heaven is your house has given you an invitation, but you're not taking it. You're not doing everything you can. To what? To, 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 to um, enter into the what? That dine. Right? We're eating of Yahweh Shai, we're eating of this word. Right? And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray that he have me excused. So another individual. Okay, it was yoke for the oxen, it's to pull the oxen, to till the ground. Right? And he said, pray that he have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, therefore I cannot come. So these are all the different excuses that men will have coming into the truth. Whether it's a wife, whether it's a land, mainly the things of the world. So that servant came and showed his Lord those things. Then the master of the house being angry, right, said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes. And these are the streets and the lanes, right? Of the city and bring it thither. Four, main, hard and the blind. So when we're teaching this word, yes, we're also bringing in the poor, lame, main, blind, the sick. Okay, those with disabilities, right? That's, the, that's those we're calling. The Abishai said, you never came for the righteous, but for the sick. So more so, that's who we're calling. More so when people come up, it's mostly the sick. Right? And compel them. So we're supposed to be compelling the people. How do we compel them? By this word. Right? By the spirit. It's really, it's the spirit that compels them, right? To come in that they may, that the house may be filled with what? Guests, right? But I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden, which mean was caught, shall taste of my supper. So those that were bidden, invited, they had excuse. They're not gonna taste of the supper. This good word, right? They're gonna have to die, right? Because they were invited, but they never accepted the invitation. They had excuses, right? This is the most important thing.
But I said to you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yeah, and his own life. So you've got to hate all these things. You've got to have It doesn't mean you start punching your family in the face. No, you despise what they stand for because they don't stand for this truth. So you despise, you despise the life they're living, but you still honor them, but you despise the life they're living. That's what it means to hate thy mother and thy father. You don't, you don't love them more than you love the truth, right? Yeah, in his own life, you even got to hate your own life, right? You even got to forsake your own life, right? Cannot be my disciple. And that's why you only have a few. You only have a few that are Yahabashai's disciples. Not just because someone picks up a Bible. Then they're out on the highways and byways. That doesn't really make you a disciple. Unless, because there's, um, there's rules to being a disciple. You have to protect everything in this world, including your family, including the life you had. If you, can't, if you cannot do that, you cannot be your disciple, right? This is a thin line, right? And whoever so does not bear his cross, so you've got to bear your own afflictions. Because a brother can't always be there to do that for you. Right? Bear his cross. Cannot be my disciple. You've got to come after your Habashai. And take that yoke. What's that yoke? That yoke of discipline. Right? For which of you intending? Bear me just a minute. Let's go to... John. I don't want to miss it. Go to John 8 and 32. Because we're coming into some really, really serious, perilous time. Okay. Go to John 8 and 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So now the hopeful elect, they know this truth, it was going to make them free. They will no longer be in the bondage of this world. They will no longer be in bondage within the mind. They will no longer be under bondage under the philosophy. They will be under bondage under the yoke of the Abishai. Right? And that's it. Okay? And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So the elect are free. The elect are not in bondage. Right? They answered him, be, be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage. So you had the wicked Israelites saying that in the time of Yahweh They were saying, we're not in captivity. But during that time, that was what? Roman, what? Rulership. You had Caesar, okay, and so forth. You had Augustus, okay. So yeah, they were in bondage under the Romans. They had a seat under the Romans. But the reason they said they were not in bondage because they were on high seats, right? They were upon them high seats. That's why they thought they were not in bondage. But they were. And how sayest thou shall be made free? So they were took him back by Yahweh saying, you are free, right? They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. Yahweh answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. So why was Yahweh saying that? Because they were in bondage to sin. They were in bondage. And he wasn't speaking to all of Israel because he said to some, and the truth shall make you free. And he said in a, what, you are, 
Let me read that again. Bear me just a minute. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whoso committeth sin, it's a servant of sin. So how are they committing sins? Through them, not believing in Yahweh Shai. Their sin was imputed upon them. Even though they had the laws. So that's how important belief is. Right? Your belief is important in Yahweh Shai. And that's what the disciples were teaching. Faith, belief. Right? And the servant abideth not in the house forever. And you're not going to reserve. And the temple, when Yahshua came on the scene, it didn't matter about the temple, the physical temple. Right? This is a spiritual temple. Okay? But the sun abided forever. Right? And that's who we build upon. We build upon Yahshua. Right? If the sun therefore shall make you free, ye are free indeed. So Yahweh has made us free. So guess what? Yes, we are free indeed. We're not under bondage. Right? I know that you are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me. Because you had some the wicked Jews that had a problem with the word. Because Yahweh was making what? People free. From what? Bondage. Right? Somewhat under the laws. Right? Because my word have no place in you. So this word, it didn't have a place within all our people. Right? Only some. Okay? Verse 38, I speak. That which I have seen with my father. See, I wish I was only speaking what the father, what he's seen. And me can only do that. Okay? And you do what you have seen with your father. And he was referring to what? Their father, Herod, Caesar, the devil. Remember, because they were serving the interest of who? Of Edomites. Right? That's who they serve in the interest of. So they were doing the bidding of their father. Right? That's why it's so important to believe in Yahweh Shai. Right? So we're done with that because the times that are going to come are going to be critical. And you're going to need every bit of faith, ounce of faith that you have, right? To make it through these times, okay? So bear me just a minute. So we're gonna go to Baruch. This is Baruch chapter four. And Start at eight, you have forgotten the everlasting power that brought you up and you have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you, right? So our people, they tend to forget about their power, their source, okay? For she saw the wrath of the Most High coming upon you. She said, how can I you that dwell in Zion? The Most High brought upon me great mourning which we had to go through, which was our captivity. For I saw the captivity of my sons, right? And daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them, which joy did I nourish them. Okay, brought the up, brought us up. But sent them away with weeping and mourning. So us being sent away with weeping and mourning, what was that? It was what, the captivity? Which was what, a part of the curses? Right? With joy I, I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow and forsaken of many. Right? The land of Israel, who for the sins of my children I am left desolate, because they departed from the law of the Most High. And any time we would depart 
from the law of the Most High, we would get spewed out of our land. Right? They knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor, nor trodden in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. That's why these things happen. Right? Let them that dwell in Zion come and remember the captivity of my sons and daughters with everlasting, which the everlasting have put upon them. Right? For he hath brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation which is known as what the Edomites, and a strange language. Who? Neither reverence, old man, right? Nor pity child. And this is when Jerusalem was what? Besieged, right? They didn't pit or pity child. These have carried away the dear beloved children of the widow and left her that was alone, desolate without daughters. But what can I help you? For he that brought his plagues, plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. So who brought these plagues upon us? Yahweh And say may he brought these plagues upon us, he's going to deliver us from these plagues also. Right? Go your way. Oh my children, go your way, for I am desolate, right? I have put off the clothing of peace, right? And we're not wearing the clothing, we're not wearing the apparel of peace right now. And put up upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. Sackcloth is what you wear during mourning. It's not fleshy garments. It's garments of mourning, right? I will cry unto the everlasting, right? In my days, that's what we're doing right now. We're crying to the everlasting, right? Be of good cheer. Oh my children, cry unto the Lord, Yahweh and he shall deliver you from the power of the hand of your enemy. So that's exactly what we're doing. Cry unto the Lord, Yahweh and he is going to deliver us from what? The power of the hand of our enemies. In due time. For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you. Right? So that's our expectation. And joy has come unto me from the Holy One, that's Yahweh Shai, because of thy mercy, we shall soon come unto you from the everlasting, our Saviour. So mercy is what? Going to be shown to the elect. Right? Everlasting mercy has already been shown through this word. And it also refers to the rest of our nation that are going to have to be destroyed on this side because they don't want to repent. Verse 23, For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, right? But the Most I will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. That's that reconcilement in the kingdom, right? Like as the neighbours of Zion have seen your captivity. So the neighbours of Zion, because even in the time of Israel, you look at the map, you had Moab, Moab was in Israel, you had Edom, Edom was in Israel. Right? Most of the nations were actually in within Israel. Except from Ham and Japheth. Right? So the neighbours of Zion saw our captivity. Right? The transatlantic slave trade. Right? So, they shall shortly see our salvation from the Most High. So guess what? They're also going to see the elect salvation. Very shortly. Bear me just a minute. See if I can find it. If, I'm, if I can't, I'll move on. They're also going to see 
the elect salvation. Heaven is. Okay, grab me just a minute. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5. Men shall the righteous man stand with great boldness, right? And right now we're standing in boldness in a particular measure. Okay, before of such afflicted him. And who we were, who we, who we were afflicted by, our enemies. That's who afflicted us, right? And made no account of his labors. The other nations, they never really made any account of our labors, right? Of our hard work. Because we were the ones that built up this society. We were the ones that built up this kingdom. Esau ain't gonna tell you that. He didn't make no account of our labors, none of our hard work. There was so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Indianos that built up this kingdom. Right? When they shall see it, they shall be troubled. Right? With terrible fear and shall be amazed. So all these nations are going to be surprised and amazed at the salvation of the elect. Even some of the wicked of our own nation. Because that ain't just referring to Esau, it's referring to all the enemies of what the Lord's servants. And the strangeness of his salvation. You know it's having this strangeness. Because it's going to be a strange thing to these other nations. Right? When the elect are getting beamed up. So far beyond all that they looked for. So it says so far that they all looked for. They, nobody's expecting for a man in the clouds, Yahweh, to beam up the elect. Nobody's thinking about that. That's crazy to them. It's not crazy to us, as we believe, but it's crazy to the world. And they. Excuse me, and they repenting and drowning. So it says repenting. So you can only repent. The children of Israel. So it says, and they repenting and groaning, right? Feeling sorry for the anguish of spiritual say within themselves. This was he who we had sometimes in derision, a proverb of reproach. Okay? Because this who does this fit? This would fit the elect, because they would be the one being reproached. And they would be the one that would be a subject of derision. You see, so it also gives away signs of what the elect would have to go through. Right? We fools counted, accounted his life madness. Why? Because when we were, when we were doing this work, we had people that never really believed. They just thought it was our uh, you know, they're wasting their time. That's how they saw it. So they accounted what we were doing as madness. Right? And his end to be without honor. And that's what a lot of people think. They don't need to say it, but that's what a lot of people think of our life. But no, this is the most honorable thing you can do to serve Yabashai. That's the most honorable thing we can do. Serve him. Right? How is he numbered among the children of the Most High? So that's what's going to be asked. How did he, how, how did he make it? You see? Remember, Yahamashai used the base things of this world to confound the wise. Right? And he's locked among the saints. Who were the saints? So called Negro, Hispanics, and Indiano. Right? Therefore, have we erred from the way of truth? That's speaking about our people. Okay, they've got a sight. All right? And the light of righteousness have not shined. On us, this light of righteousness is not going to shine on all of our people. 
there's only going to be a few that receive this word. Right? And the Son of Righteousness not rose upon us. The Son of Righteousness is referring to Yahweh Shai. Right? And it's only going to raise upon his elect. Okay? We buried ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. And that's why we always teach what? Repentance. Right? Yeah, we have gone through the desert. Okay? Where they know man. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. Right? And this is referring to what the two thirds and the wicked of our nation. They never knew the way of righteousness. Right? So now we're going to go back to Baruch. We're back on Baruch 4. And. Where is it? Where is it? 25. My children suffer patiently. So that's what we're doing. The wrath that has come upon you from Yahweh by Shem Yahabashai. For thine enemy have persecuted thee. Right? Through slavery. But shortly thou shalt see his destruction and thou shalt tread upon his neck. So shortly the elect are going to see that and tread upon his neck also. Quickly go to Psalms. Right? Go to some. Quickly tread upon our enemies' necks. Right? Go to some. Many work. You know how she shall see it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of Yahweh by Shem Yabashai. What's that secret place? His words. The words of Shouter. This is abiding in that secret place. Right? Under the shadow of the Almighty, a shadow is a covering. This word is, is a covering. He that abides, dwell. Right here is what the shadow of the Almighty, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Right? I will serve the Lord Yahweh He's my refuge and my fortress. Right? So a refuge is a covering. A refuge is a protection. A refuge is somewhere you go for safety. Right? And my fortress, my power in whom when I trust, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Right? So what's the snare of the fowler? Traps, martial law. Jacob's trouble. Right? All these different things. And the noisome pestilence, right? And the noisome pestilence is their missiles, right? That's what that noisome pestilence is, them ICBMs. He shall cover thee with his fetters. That's just Satan slacking about the noise. That's just Satan trying to hinder the word, right? He shall cover thee with his fetters, and under his wings thou shalt trust. So, what's them fetters? The fetters are what? The chariots, right? It's going to cover you with them. Okay? And that's one thing you have to believe in this truth. And under his wings shall I trust his truth shall be that shield and buckler. Right? Which is 
what a covering. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. Right? Nor for the passage that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Right? A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it should not come nigh unto thee. Right? Only with thy eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. So the elect are going to see the reward of the wicked. Right? They're going to see it. That means they would have to be alive. Right? Because thou hast made the Lord Yahweh which is my refuge. That's why it's so important to make Yahweh Shai your refuge. So those that have in this time have made Yahweh Shai the protection they're covering, they're going to be looked after. Right? When all this hell breaks loose. Okay? Even the most high thy habitation, where shall no evil befall thee? Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Right? For he shall give his angels charge over thee. So the elect, the hopeful elect, they're going to be looked after. Right? And keep thee in all thy ways. So there's the angel or angels looking after the elect. Right? So we're going back to Baruch. Excuse me. So we're back on Baruch. Okay. Baruch 3 and where was we? Yes, 26. My delicate ones who have gone through rough ways. That's speaking of the children of Israel. They were known as what? Delicate, right? And were taken as a flock, right? Caught of the enemies, right? And the scriptures talk about Israel being a flock. Right? Be of good comfort. So, again, why are these scriptures written? For our comfort. Be of good comfort. Oh, my children, and pray unto the Most High. Okay? For ye shall be remembered of him that put all these things upon you. Ye shall be remembered of him that put these things upon you. Right? Who are we going to be remembered by? Yahweh Shai. Okay? Because he's the one that brought these things upon us. The chastisement, um, our captivity. So it says, be of good cheer. Right? That's what we're supposed to do. Be of good cheer. Be of a good mind. Because he brought these things upon us. Right? Knowing that, what it... When we're nearly at the end of our captivity. Right? Here it is. First, it was your mind to go astray from the Most High. So being turned, returned, seeking ten times more. So seek Him double. Now we went astray. We got to seek Yahweh double. More. We can never do enough. That's the spirit we're supposed to have within this truth. We can never do enough. We can always do more. That's the spirit you want to have. We want to have. For he that brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy. And again, the salvation. Right? What? In the kingdom. Right? And everlasting salvation. Everlasting. And that's why we're laboring. And we want to make it on that first go round. Right? We don't want to get burnt up with these people. We don't want to suffer the same fate of the wicked. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name 
will comfort thee, which is who? Yahweh Abishai. Miserable are they, right? That afflicted thee, okay? And rejoice at thy fall, these other nations. So shall she be grieved for her own desolation. And the desolation is referring to America, right? And Esau's going to be grieved and the other nations, right? At the desolation of what? America, which is Babylon, right? For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude and her pride shall be turned into mourning. Okay, all your little silly pride parades, your little celebrations, all that's going to be taken away, right? For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting. So Yahabashai, he's going to send fire upon his kingdom, right? In a, in a way of what? Missiles. Long to endure, she shall be inhabited of devils for a long time. Speaking about America. America is going to be a what habitation of what devils? Right? Old Jerusalem, look about toward the east and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from the most high. Right? So that's what we're waiting for. Salvation. As we wait patiently. Lo, the sons come, whom thou sent us away. Right? They come gathered together from the east and to the west by the word of the Lord Jehovah Rejoice in the glory of thy father. So that's what we're waiting for. Okay? We're waiting for the destruction of this wicked king, kingdom. Right? Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah. And we're going to jump straight to 50. The quicker this place goes down, the better. Go to Jeremiah 50. This is Jeremiah 50. And 12. Your mother shall be so confirmed. Who is America's mother? Right? It's Britain. Right? She that bear you shall be ashamed. Right? Behold, the hindermost of the nation shall be a wilderness and a dry land and a desert. And this is all going to be played out by what? By nuclear War. Right? Because of the wrath of the Lord Yahweh Yabashai, it shall not be inhabited. So yes, America ain't gonna be inhabited ever again. Right? But it shall be wholly desolate, completely desolate, completely empty. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished. Astonished means surprised. And hiss at her plagues. Right? So it lets us know. People are going to be what? Surprised at what?